Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, presidential elections are set for September the 15th in Tunisia after incumbent Beji Kaid Asebsi passes away after five years in power. Also, Zimbabwe's tourism minister is arrested by the country's anti-corruption agency in its first high-profile detention. And Cameroon tries to crack down on the open sale of pharmaceutical and drugs on the roadside. Many of the products on offer may be fake, substandard or counterfeit, a risk that can be deadly. But first, Tunisia's president of five years died on Thursday. Beji Kaid Asebsi passed away aged 92. He was the country's first democratically elected leader. In 2014, he won elections that followed the 2011 Arab Spring uprising. He'd been hospitalized in June and had said that he wouldn't be running an election set for November. In the wake of his death, that date's now been moved to September the 15th. Thursday also saw the head of parliament take over as interim president. Yana Lee tells us more. This is the man set to replace Beji Kaid Esepsi, at least for now. According to Tunisia's constitution, the head of parliament becomes interim president. Mohamed Enasser will be in charge of the national homage for the deceased head of state. I would I would like to pay tribute to what President Beji Kaid Esebsi has done to build an independent state and in his role as president for the past five years. Esebsi died at a military hospital in Tunis. He had been admitted to the same medical center last month when he fell ill. After being discharged, the 92-year-old announced fresh legislative elections for October 6th and a presidential vote for November 17th. Earlier this year, Esepsi had already said he'd not run again. After a period of mourning, electoral campaigns for the two upcoming votes will get underway. A competitive transition is expected. Controversially, Esepsi's own son, Hafed, took over his Nida Tunis party, prompting many politicians to defect. Prime Minister Youssef Shahed and his breakaway long-lived Tunisia party have cemented the rivalry within the ruling government. Tunisia's Islamist party, Enhada, stands to benefit from the division, an outcome that could tarnish a part of Esepsi's legacy. Tunisia's first democratically elected president never broke ties with the old guard, focusing instead on turning a new leaf after the fall of Ben Ali. His cabinet notably pushed through an equal inheritance law for men and women. Well, Zimbabwe's tourism minister has been arrested by the country's anti-corruption agency in its first high-profile detention. Priska Mukfumira used to oversee a state pension fund from which millions of dollars went missing. President Emerson Manangagwa has vowed to crack down on graft in the country. Corruption is estimated to cost Zimbabwe more than $1 billion a year. Well, for a closer look at the significance of Mukfumira's arrest, we're joined by Ryan Truscott. Ryan, so what exactly is she supposed to have done? Well, we don't know. The, the Anti-Corruption Commission has yet to issue a detailed statement on this arrest. It only said she was being held for questioning. It didn't specify what she's accused of. However, the ruling party's youth wing alleged last month that she was guilty of corruption. Uh, they included her on a list of what they said were corrupt officials who were undermining the country's economy. Uh, before she was tourism minister, Priska Mupumira was labor and social welfare minister. And as, as such, she was in charge of overseeing the State Pension and Social Welfare Fund. And a recent audit by the Auditor General is said to have implicated top officials, including former and serving ministers in the abuse of those uh, state pension funds. That audit report hasn't been made public. So I must say that at, at the moment, we have no confirmation that the, the minister has been implicated by it. Uh, but there is a lot of speculation around this. Now, there had been some scepticism about the impact that the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission could have. Does Mopfira's arrest show that it's, it's serious in at least pursuing um, suspect, suspects uh, of high status? Well, this could be a, a first step, but what many Zimbabweans will be waiting to see is whether bigger fish will be netted in this anti-corruption drive. Uh, Priska Mopfira is a cabinet minister, yes. Uh, but she's not the most high-profile person accused of corruption. 
the question many will be asking is, is hers going to be the token arrest in an anti-corruption clampdown that will see others, uh, bigger fish, uh, going scot-free? Also, critics say that the Zimbabwe government has in the past carried out a kind of a catch and release program. Uh, that is, members of the political elite get arrested, but they are rarely convicted of any crime or jailed for corruption. I'm thinking of the, the businessman Wicknell Chivayo, who has close links to the Mugabe family. He was arrested last year on suspicion of fairly significant fraud, but he was acquitted in March, and there was a lot of public disappointment around that. So I think that the verdict is still out as to how far uh, this anti-corruption commission is going to be allowed to go. Thanks very much. Ryan Truscott there for us. Now, Islamic State West African branch has claimed responsibility for the kidnapping of six aid workers in northeastern Nigeria. The captives work for action against hunger and were in a hostage video released by their captors. And the group was seized near the border with Niger during an ambush on their convoy last Thursday. A swap broke away from Boko Haram jihadists after swearing allegiance to IS group in 2016. It's repeatedly attacked military bases and targeted aid workers in Nigeria. And Libya's Coast Guard suspects that up to 150 migrants have drowned after the boat that they were crossing the Mediterranean in went down. About 140 others traveling with them were rescued. The UN, though, fears that this is the worst tragedy of its kind this year. Hundreds of people risk their lives every week trying to make it into Europe by making the dangerous sea crossing from Libya. Well, tens of thousands of people die across Africa every year because of fake medication. Almost half of the counterfeit and low-quality medicine reported to the WHO between 2013 and 2017 was in sub-Saharan Africa. Now, it's a market that, globally, is worth about $200 billion. In some countries, like Cameroon, the drugs are sold openly. The government has recently announced a crackdown there. Our correspondents report. In the heart of the Yaoundé Central Market, a roadside pharmacy with boxes of supposed drugs sold by vendors with no medical background or training. One vendor, whose customers call him doctor, says he has been in the business of selling contraband drugs since 1974. He makes about 15 euros profit a day and is not happy with the government's crackdown on roadside medication. Yeah, about 80 percent of Cameroonians buy and use these drugs. The decision taken by the Minister of Public Health to ban our sales makes us very uncomfortable. Because when your livelihood is abruptly interrupted without prior warning, it's very hurtful. His clients don't earn much and most are unaware of the risks of buying from him. Drugs are often fake, expired or impure. Using them can be damaging and even deadly. Bonjour, doctor. Lucien is a regular customer. Roadside drugs are half of the price of those in pharmacies. He says the uncertain quality is worth the risk. If I had a headache or a stomach ache, I would have to buy a drug for five or six thousand francs in a pharmacy. On the streets, it's a lot cheaper. That's why I come here. Reduit. The National Institute of Statistics reckons that most Cameroonians who live on less than $2 a day turn to bootleg vendors when buying medication. The Ministry of Public Health is cracking down. Unfortunately, we still see these vendors along the streets. They sell and are very comfortable with their business. I want to make them uncomfortable. The period of grace will soon come to an end. For now, we will communicate more and intensify sensitization campaigns. After that, there will be no mercy. The World Health Organization estimates that at least 30 percent of drugs sold on streets in Africa come from doubtful sources. Every year, the deaths of approximately 100,000 people across the continent can be linked to the use of contraband medication. Well, that's it for Iron Africa. Thanks for joining us. That's it for now. Take care. The world is ever-changing. The news doesn't wait. That's why at France 24, we'll always be there to help make sense of world events. For the best international coverage, 24 hours a day, no matter what, France 24 
is with you everywhere, all the time. Liberté, égalité, actualité. Versailles, the Louvre, Mont Saint-Michel are well-known stars of French heritage. But French genius and France harbors many other hidden treasures. The arts, gastronomy, architecture, as well as nature's wonders. Come along with France 24. Discover France's living heritage. From young apprentices to accomplished craftsmen and farmers, to Michelin star sporting chefs, meet these people whose passion for their professions preserve and drive French heritage. You are here on France 24 and France24.com.